Can you do the Swedish accent sometimes? sometimes? <laughs> if you run into other people from Luskin. Luskin. Okay, so it's a Luskin axe. Yeah. Like, yours isn't a Russian accent, but you don't, like I said, no one in around here knows, it has your kind of names and has your kind of accent. It's probably a northerner accent, but down east Faerun. Okay, anyway, all right. Starting up in five, four, three, two. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Horde of the Dragon Queen of Icefire Peak. In this episode, on the left, we have the Furbolg, on the right, we have Hartman, and we're now introducing, in the middle, Zareth. Yes, YouTube, we have diversity! So, it is the evening of the eighth day of the first week of the month of the fading. Uh, it's just right at sunset. Uh, the lands below the mountain are already at night, but right up at the top of the, the mountain of Ice Spire Peak, it's still a sliver of daylight. And there's this big castle that looks like an ice cube attached to a gatehouse. There's a big floating airship next to it, and on one of the pinnacles, as Cryobane comes flying back up from whatever she was just doing. There's a, a young red dragon wearing a riding harness on one of the pinnacles, and it spreads its rings and roars a greeting as she swoops in and lands in the courtyard in the middle of the castle. Waiting down there, there's a couple of Gith Yankee soldiers, and there's a bigger hag, which looks like this. To some people, they're called mountain hags. To other people, they're called winter hags. And flanking her, right to her right, are two young girls, the Titchwillow twins. They both look like they're human, about maybe age six or seven, both cute as buttons, matching black hair, matching fur coats, little bows in their hair. And they're just sitting there politely and quietly next to the hag as she waits for the dragon to land. And as the dragon's getting settled, the, the hag is like, uh, we're ready to start the ceremony. Crow Vane looks at her and starts to say something and <laughs> spits up a big wad of phlegm onto the icy floor and something's wiggling in it. It's a gnome and a green cape and he's struggling <laughs> and gasping for breath. The hag looks back up at the dragon as she wipes out her mouth with a paw and the dragon looks down at her. You can begin now. The hag goes over to this big cauldron that was grown out of ice and it's got this still pale blue liquid and she takes something out of an ingredient pouch and sprinkles it and it causes the liquid to start boiling and frothing and emerging up out of it is a transformed Gith Yankee her eyes glowing bright blue and this is Zareth uh, one of the two Gith Yankee soldiers is holding a, uh, a big fur blanket and starts to walk up towards her I grab it with mage hand okay so you pull the coat right out of his arms. I don't even wait for him to come up to me. Okay. And you wrap it around yourself, I assume. Mm-hmm. Well, here's your set. You just came out of this pool. You're like flush with dragon energy. Your mind has been flooded 
with like the hundred years of Cryovane's memories, years of being locked in a dungeon, tormented by undead evil sorcerers, the Red Wizards of Fae, of Fae. What do you want to do? I'm going to look around and try and get my bearings. Well, my daughter, now you have awakened. How do you feel? A bit confused. That is only natural. The magic which has transformed you should subside in time. But in the meanwhile, I have orders for you, if you wish to accept them. Whatever you wish. Below us is a small town. There, one of my agents, a Furbolg, is doing some service for me, and I want to make sure that he succeeds in this. It's all part of my greater plan. Mm -hmm. so I need you to go down there, help him out, assess what it is he's doing, if you think it works, assist him. If you think it won't work, point him in a better direction. And if you find that he is planning to betray me, I want you to slit his throat in the night. That is doable. To aid you in this, I've got you a little birthday present. Another warrior who is lurking over in the corner, who is not a Gith Yankee, he's wearing this weird, like, white leather armor with a bright blue scarf, and his, head, his face is entirely obscured by a helmet, so you can't really tell what kind of race he is other than that he's a human, um, or humanoid male. And he comes leading up with a pegasus on a bridle, and it's, like, freaked out. Pegasus are good creatures. The pegasus is not digging this scene. The hag goes over to the pegasus, grabs it by the face and stares into its eyes until it calms down and then she hands it this weird rotting looking apple and gets the pegasus to eat it you know pegasus kind of freaks out and when he's and then calms down and you can kind of notice that its eyes have changed color to kind of match the yellowed red of the apple and the, the hag says she will now obey you it's like here you can use this horse to get down to where you need to be what's and you also get to name your Pegasus. Mm. What would she name? Is that's it a herd? going to take a minute. Okay. So, one more thing before you go. Crowvane wants you to kill the struggling or the struggling gnome that's uh, still trying to get like, breathe and get all this fucking dragon mucus off of him. Kill him for me. I cast Rare Frost. Alright. Smash cut to the morning of the ninth. You wake up hearing a knocking on the door at your manor house overlooking the town of Phandalin. I guess you can get out the Phandalin map now. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Y'all got in late from your little trip to the excavation last night. And so it's like maybe like nine in the morning-ish. That's our manor house. And knock on the door. I go up to the door and swing it open. You see the strange Gith Yankee, probably redressed into her normal pirate clothes by this point, one would assume. And uh, behind her, you see a Pegasus. And there's a small crowd of pe villagers kind of at the base of the hill, kind of like all gawking at, like, what the fuck is this? Am I there? Yeah. <laughs> You're at the manor house, right? Oh, sick. Yeah, yeah. I guess you, like, you hear the commotion are starting to get up, but he wakes up first because he has a higher passive perception. So. Is my wife there? Yeah, Puyat's with you. And the orcs are there, there, like, snoozing in the main hall oh, yeah. of your busted down manor house. It's an old ruined building, but they've. Uh, paid uh, some locals to start patching it up, but they're still ways away from being finished. First, I uh, shout to the people. I'm like, nothing to see. Please move on. Thank you. Okay. Um, pass that. Uh, who are you? I was sent by Cryovane. What's your name? Zareth. Okay. Well, I whisper. I whisper to to the Furbolg. Like, I don't trust this lady. I was not put here for you to trust me. So you heard me. Big ears. What? <laughs> <laughs> Big pointy ears, man. Um. Well, 
welcome. Come see the rest of the crew. Over here we have a uh, Puyet, our lovely little healer. We also Good got a uh, Hartman here. He's pretty awesome. You know, he has pretty cool acts. All the orcs that I can't remember their names of. Lubash and Morg. Right here. And yeah. You were sent by Crowvane for what? To help you on your mission. Mm. Alright. It's Lubash and who? Morg. Morg. Lubash Morg. Well, Lubash Morg. Since I guess I don't really have a say in the matter, Crowvane wishes what Crowvane wishes. I guess I'll just fill you in on the plan. We're currently trying to set up a high harvest type festival up in Coneyberry Bruins. But to do that, we need to talk to a lot of the um, high powers around here to get money and just like to get them there so possibly we can get investors, more people to settle and create something to where hopefully we'll be able to get this Archmage and a good couple of underlings to help perform a shrink spell on the castle up at Neverwinter, or not Neverwinter, at uh, Sword Mountains to hopefully shrink it down to be able to fit through a portal so we can get Cryovane out of here. In the meantime though, we are currently just getting set up to help finish off this so we can get better. Or I need to talk to the Mountain's Toe. Yeah, you want to go and resolve the Mountain's Toe, so, because in order to do part of this plan, you don't want to piss off the local Lord, Lord Neverember. Yeah. So to do that, we clear out the original mission we were here for. Yeah. Secure his gold toe. mines. One less thing for him to be, like, pissy about. Yeah. Put us in a little bit good favor. I shall help you as I see fit. Okay. Right. Well, your original plan is you were going to take off. You are going to be gone for a couple weeks after you leave Fandolin, so I know you're going to need to go and buy feed yes, for I the horses and stuff. Buy some feed real quick. If you all even want to take quick. all your horses and wagons. And also, you now you have this Pegasus to throw in the mix in terms of things. And we can assume, like, the Pegasus has some interesting, like, barding and stuff. Maybe even, like, a like a faceplate with, like, a fake unicorn horn on it or some, some shit like that. It's up to you, kind of, what you want it to look like. <clears throat> Make it metal. Mm -hmm. Also, the, the Pegasus eats meat now. Oh, what? Yeah. Oh, it's dude. It's been corrupted. So it's, does it have sharp teeth? Yes. yes. No. Oh. It's, it, it rips shit apart with regular flat, blunt horse teeth, which is probably even worse. That's fucking okay. awful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just well, rips the my my print. flesh right off. Just rips the right. um, <clears throat> hide off of a cow. <laughs> I guess we need to go to Barthens Provisions real quick to buy some feed. Oh. If everyone's still cool with taking the wagons down to Coney or down to uh, the Mountain's Toe. And so, let's go to Barthens Provisions real quick. Let me show you around. Let's get all this. Yeah, introducing this new strange woman to town. The crowd has not dispersed at all. In fact, it's grown a little bit. They, no one seemed to... There's nothing to see here. It didn't work on them very well. Uh, Alright. Um, in fact, you also see Faldang amongst the crowd. And Ruby comes up to... Right. I can sleep out of her eyes over all the commotion. Someone riding in on a on a Pegasus is kind of an unusual sight. Pegasi are a little bit rare nowadays uh, because, like horses, Pegasi like are often targeted by griffins, and since griffins are bred so much by some cities as riding mounts, it's had a huge dent on the Pegasus population. Not as rare as unicorns, but still, it's not an everyday sight to see, especially one armored with a fucking black unicorn horn strapped to it and all that kind of stuff. So. Where does Pegasus come from? Pegasus land. Well, the guy in white armor with the blue sash brought yeah. it, so if you can figure out who the guy's in white armor with blue sashes, that would help you start to figure that out. But, um, I guess we need to try to... It's not the nicest Pegasus, I'm sure. I feel a malicious intent from it. Anyway, since it is a meat eater, though, and can fly, like, uh... You don't necessarily have to worry so much about buying feed for the Pegasus, like when y'all are taking your rest breaks and just traveling, kinda. just let her run off and go hunt. And, oh uh, man, just like rips up a squirrel. <sighs> but you, it's five copper per day of feed, you have two horses, and you could be gone for up to like rest of the goddamn month according to your little travel plan. So how much feed do you want to buy? We are going to get to Neverwinter in a little bit, but also we're planning to leave the horses either up in Gontelgrim or leave it next to Coneyberry with the orcs. That way, whenever we're going up through the hills... Let me show you real quick. Current plan, let's go from Fandolin here. 
talk to the um, chick at the um, windmill. windmill real quick so we can get, what's the god? Oh, Shantae. Shantae. Shantae is the god of like... The harvest, harvest and, and farming. Thing. So high harvest tide would be perfect for getting someone of Shantae. Then we go over to the mountain's toe, fix that, and go through up, hopefully run into kobolds, get Coneyberry, excavate Coneyberry, go up to the um, Dwarven Barbarian somewhere in here, have to find them. And then from there we go all the way up to Gonselgrim, and then down the river, all the way to Falcon's Lodge, talk to the Anchorites, which are um, Talos worshipping half orcs, and then back up and to Neverwinter. The thing is, though, if they take the river at some point, you're gonna have to leave your horses or leave them all behind and just not take them in the first place. Yeah. And but like, if you leave them at Gothagrim, that means at some point you're gonna have to go all the way back to Gothagrim or sell your wagon and your horses or hire a barge, which you might not have enough money for. Dude, what the hell? Your Pegasus is OP. Well, don't worry about her Pegasus, bro. Her Pegasus is also like it's it's like I said, monkey's paw. Like cool things have have to keep pros and cons. To get a vantage point from the air. Yeah, no, that's that's good. There's um, a lot of situations where you're not like you're not gonna take your Pegasus with you into a fucking cave. Yes, you can. And I mean, you never know if someone might like, ooh, I'd love to steal that Pegasus. You know, I mean, no, they won't. Definitely. Probably not. Whenever it's like gonna kind of ram at them with a horn. Right. <laughs> right. And then there's also the tank theory of you get into a battle, things to will tend to attack the most powerful looking thing first. Mm. That is true. Interesting. Tank theory. Oh, it's either tank theory or healer, because either they'll try to attack the healer first, so they won't have any healing capability. But if you don't, if you can't identify that shit, you you yeah. take out the biggest, strongest looking thing first, and something riding a unicorn would be that, or a pegasus. Yeah. Um, but have so, you decided on a name? Frostwing. Okay. Frostwing. Whoa, that's actually pretty good. That's a good name. <laughs> All right. Well, go to Barthen's provisions real quick. Is everyone unanimous with taking the, um. Carriage and whatnot. <coughs> yeah. All if right. you leave it in town, Faldank will watch over it. Faldank's a, uh, a friendly farmer. It's right over here. Thanks, Faldank. It's pretty cool. All he right. makes the best cheese in town. Yeah, he sure do, and I sold it. Yeah, you son of a bitch. What? You sold it, man. Yeah, we got to get, get more alcohol. What? Okay, Do doesn't matter. Um, so go to Barthens Provisions by... How, like, you need, it's like I said, it's five copper a day, you got copper two horses, so, so how many days? One silver a day one. for two horses. Yeah. And then we can just buy ten days, so I'll be a week. That'd be enough to at least get to another settlement and, and, and restock, hopefully. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. Ten, so ten, knock yeah. off ten silver. So one gold. You need gold. No, that's good. Cool. I got mine. And so we're down to thirty-seven gold. And now we have feed. Where's my wagon inventory? Are these your markers? Yeah. Okay. Wagon, that one. Mm. Oh, that reminds me. I need to fucking develop a weather table. I've never bothered with that so far. Did a uh, cryovane provide me with any funds? No, you have the starting ten gold okay. that that you just have with your character equipment. Let's see. So it's uh, you can always sell the Pegasus. <laughs> Nope. <laughs> 20. Things. You'd get a lot. Oh, I bet. How much uh, the do? random treasure in this game, like, they've they've made and spent a shit ton of money already, so that's not a big issue. Yeah, oh, well, you'll run into plenty. Plus, we're about to go to, like, a gold mine. How Although, much? you're not there to take the gold. Yeah. I mean, we... Mm -hmm. I have by the hand. You don't even know what's there. You just know that there's been no communication from the mine foreman for over a month now. Right. So just so we all know what's in the wagon, there's eight torches, two hand axes, shackles, a shovel, three tents, and seven bedrolls. And yeah, that's it. Do have a couple things at the Heroes Hall if you want to grab any of those, Micah. Mm. Uh, orca bone statue, clothes of gold vestments, and copper chalice. What's that second one? Clothes of gold vestments, like uh, priest robes that are gold. Yeah. Alright, too sparkly. And, alright. Okay. Got all that. So you're gonna take a couple miles, head down south and visit Shante. Any last thing you want to do in town? Anyone else you want to talk to? You need to, to talk to Ruby real quick. Uh, do you think she's probably still near the manor? Yeah, or, you know, she, if she's not there, she'd probably go back to the inn. 
Alright, well, e go up to Ruby. I want to ask her if she'll uh, come with us real quick, because we don't really need her watching the manor at this time. And just uh, come with us to the mountain's toe, and once we finish clearing it out, just uh, come back and send word to Wester that we've done it. Okay. Ruby has joined your party. Alright, um... Are we... She's not well, She's okay. not going to be operating as a sidekick. You don't need to control her. She'll right, just be good. an NPC. So oh, she she's making sure. I don't have to do any of that anyways. So there we go. Unless she's directly attacked, she'll defend herself under my right. determination. That's cool. What's the name of the chick? I'm just here to roll dice. What's the name of the chick at the windmill? Uh, Adabra. Adabra. Adabra Gwyn. Seven. I didn't write that. Seventeen. All right, so Seven. we mo we're mosey on down to. Okay. The well, the windmill is as you found it last time. Uh, no man. No no, no manticore trying to bust into it this time to eat the poor nice blonde lady. <laughs> um, the manticore's mate has a thing for blondes. Yeah. As snacks. We had a plan originally, but it didn't Tasty. Get anymore. Is she dead? No. Okay. I was speaking of which you need to keep an eye on. You don't know yet. So she doesn't get picked Ooh. up. I see you go up and knock on the door. I, do you want me to take the lead? That's just I checking. Wanna, I want to take the lead this time. Okay. I knock on the door. Okay. And I, then I call up and I'm like, hey, lady. Hang on a moment. She comes down, opens the door, looks at all y'all. Reacts to like, what on earth is this? And then also notices all the orcs standing behind y'all like, oh, uh, the other orcs came yesterday to get the kids. What, what did y'all need? Oh, I was just uh, wanting to ask you about your god that you prayed to, because I noticed it was the god of um, harvest and... Yes, I'm an acolyte of Shantae. Yeah, and we're actually having a high harvest tide festival up in Coneyberry. Isn't that a ruin? Yes, we're actually going to be remaking it into a small town. Hopefully, once that's built up, we can make it into a new holy city. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Okay, well, what do you need from me? Uh, we were just wondering if we can, like... One, get the, like, blessing from Shantae, and then hopefully get some people there to where, like, due to it is a high harvest tide festival, having people harvest would be more inclined, I feel. Well, unfortunately, the high priestess of our order is away for now, and I don't know when she's going to be getting back. But I can put the word out, and we can cobble something together and come up there and join, join you. Uh, we were originally going to be at the high harvest tide festival for Neverwinter, so I don't know if that might conflict with that, but, uh... Sounds, sounds good, I guess. Yeah, sure. Yeah, we were even going to go to Neverwinter and hopefully get a couple people from there to come over to Coneyberry to, you know, show good tidings and all. Okay. All right, well, just let me know if you need anything, and I'll, I'll put the word out to my fellows. Uh, we're quick. not a huge order, but, you know. Hartman, how much gold do you have? Enough. Uh, just how much? Oh, uh, 212. Yeah, she does. It's the only place nearby you can buy healing potions. Want to buy a couple real quick? I've got one. They're 50 each. Uh, no, I am. Um, I have Kogar's ointment mm -hmm. and a couple other things. I was I'm just, just kind of hanging in the back watching everything. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're viewing. You're still learning. What's going on? Distance. Let's see. Yeah, Kogar's ointment. Oh, still so have the filter of love. That's cool. Let me do... The, actually, I would like a health potion. Just one next Do Do any of y'all be like, oh, this is our new friend? Nope. Okay. Oh. my friend. <laughs> this is our new acquaintance, uh, Zara. Oh, hi. Pleased to meet you. She goes to shake your hand. I just nod. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, are you going to buy some healing potions or not? Micah? Yeah, yeah, I just want one. Just one? All right, 50 gold. Deduct 50 gold and use a healing potion. Hey, another. It's good to have. It, just, it kept him from dying. It kept yeah. a lot of us from dying. <laughs> all right, and... Uh, yeah, I believe that's all. I think it's time thanks to pull out Rashin's map and try to find the mountain's toe. Okay. Well, big thanks to the fact that you do have the map. Uh, you won't have to do a bunch of random survivor rolls to navigate. It's going to take about a full day's travel to cut through all the hills. Um, do you turn the and land vehicles? It's yeah, he, yeah, you can have him as, as the group avatar for the Final Fantasy map and you just see Cloud running around. Mm -hmm. Um... <laughs> See. About halfway there, like say like about maybe what we, what we would call one or two in the afternoon, you stop, you take your lunch, it's been a nice pleasant day, not a lot of trouble, birds are out singing and shit. Uh, the seasons in this world have been slipping, so even though this should be the beginning of autumn, it still feels like late summer. Um, Texas weather. But as you're cutting through, you come across a, like a little tiny creek running through a couple of hills, 
and in the distance you can kind of like you can almost feel like you hear a little singing and you hear like some hammering and other like works of industry kind of coming up the little valley that the creek's coming down hmm. i want to follow it okay uh so i go up the creek right. should we roll initiatives Just oh yeah yeah we're gonna like like i said we're gonna start doing group initiative oh, now so right. everyone roll initiative and this is your initiative for the rest of the session oh, damn it. i got uh 10. Okay. She got 18. I, I, got I don't 15. do initiative bonuses. You just get your die roll. Okay. Unless so, you have a specific power that says initiative bonus, but yes. I don't add your decks or anything. It's complicated shit. So, uh... So Hartman's 10. Yeah. I'm 13. She's 18. It seems to be sensing a theme here in how die rolling works for y'all. Bottom, that? middle, top. <laughs> Alright. I kind of... Yeah. yeah. 18... Oh you said you got a 13 for it? Yeah, 13. Okay. And let's see here. For now, I just need to roll for two of these guys. And they both roll low. Oh no. Oh yeah. <laughs> Alright, as you go up the little uh, hill valley following the creek, as you get closer, you, you see like a little prospecting camp. You see some tents, and you see uh, like some pe people that near the river sifting shit. And as you get closer, you realize it's goblins. Ooh. And uh, one of them, well, it's not a goblin. Uh, they also have an ogre howda. Let me get these cards out. So many cards. Which is an ogre that's got like a bunch of shit all over his back. The guy, he's big. He's basically, he's being used as like construction equipment. Would I be able to tell if they're like kind of passive or if they're aggressive? No, you can make a you can make check. a perception check. Yeah. Right. At any point, you can you can ask to make rolls for things. Three. You can't tell. You, just, <laughs> you're, you're, you you don't have any experience with goblins, so you don't know what's up. Can with my them. guy take a roll real quick? If you want. Five. All right. Orvald <laughs> takes a roll. <laughs> oh, Alright, so y'all you know, have no idea if these goblins are going to be hostile or not, but they seem okay. to be like not noticing y'all because they're all busy uh, sifting through mud and they're prospecting for gold. It's just a little prospector camp. I'm just going to kind of jump on my pegasus. Okay. Mork, right. Lubash, stick to Bouillet, make sure she's safe. Um, I advance forward out of the cart. And uh, I want yeah, to. Yeah, you leave the cart. And yeah, walk I leave up to the him. cart. I want uh, Puyet and the orcs to stay on the cart. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want him. Oh, and the cart does have his cover now because exactly. that got finished. Yeah. So um, I get out. Uh, Hartman, come with me. I do. Yeah. And you get on the Pegasus mm -hmm. just to like keep check. I I, I load a crossbow bolt. And uh, I come out. I say, well met. The goblin boss. The lasher for this little team. He pops out of a tent. The other goblins are like, all make a little their simple squeaky, like, what the heck? Yeah, noises. The ogre. Yeah. <gasps> Furbolg! What, what can we do for you, Furbolg? I need answers of what are y'all doing right here? Um, we were sent from Fort Hob to uh, look for gold. Do you know about anything of the Mountain's Toe near here? Um, this whole area is Mountain's Toe. It's the toe of the mountain. Do you know of the gold mine anywhere near here? And there's lots of mines around here, but we were told to stick to river and not interfere with miner. The, right. the last short Fort Hob does not want us getting into fight. Uh, actually, I'm going to be... Uh, I sent a message to your lasher. Um, Y'all should come back to uh, Coneyberry in a couple weeks for the High Harvest Tide Festival. We're going to be having a celebration there. Coneyberry, that old town north of here, smashed by those hill dwarves. Yes, the very same. We're remaking it for every species. Okay, well, my men could probably use day off. Assuming they deserve it, you fucking kill. <laughs> Lazy bastards. Only the ogre actually gets any goddamn work done around here. The people I gotta put up with. Well, uh, I... Well, we'll take that into consideration. Thank you uh, for not killing us with your uh, with your, your strange woman on Pegasus. Uh, yeah. Um, anything else we can do for you, old noble furball? No. Just 
Have y'all seen any kobolds around the area? Kobolds, no. Uh, a couple day ago, we do get attacked by some uh, halflings and rats. The were rats. I've heard rumors of those around here. Um, do you know what direction they went? Uh, they fled back northward. Fled back north. We killed one of them. He's buried over there. I think I can examine the body real quick. Uh, just don't dig up the other goblins. They they made up. There's like a little pile of cairns, which you know, like instead of actually properly burying somebody in a grave, they just pile a bunch of stones over them with like crappy little shitty grave markers because they're goblins. They're not the most sophisticated of people. All right, well, go over there to that one, and I want to like move all the rubble off of it to like get a view of like what this halfling looked like. Okay. I uh, want to use perception roll to see if I. It'll can... take a little time to do, but you can clear the rubble off. And there is this battered, dust-covered halfling that's like got a big stab wound. He's got this coat on uh, that's uh, made out of uh, rat furs that have all been stitched together, and they still even have the tails attached. So it's got all these weird little like Tailings. dangling things all over it. And he's a little smelly because he's been dead a couple days. Uh, you gonna make? What did you get for your perception roll? Uh... Eleven. Uh, you find a pocket on the inside of his coat. Goggles of night. Cool. Let's see. While wearing these dark lenses, you have dark vision out to a range of 60 feet. If you already have dark vision, wearing the goggles increases the range by 60 feet. Well, cool. I'm going to pocket that. Okay. Like I said, you'll, you'll have to attune yourself, or someone can attune themselves to it, depending on who in the group you want to give it to. Well, let's see. You already have night vision. Um, he's just a human. They, they don't get dark vision. Yeah. I'm not sure if the, the, the Yankee have, have that. Yeah. yeah. I think 60 so, right? feet. I was it, at night It'd be written vision. down. That'd be useful if I could Or maybe that's Puget. I don't think The orcs, the orcs vision. have dark vision. I'm not I was sure looking at Puget. They used to work for the Elithids, but I think that was back when the Mind Flayers had an interstellar empire and before they were, like, underground people. Do you not so. have it? I don't um, if that's know. the case, since you are air reconnaissance, pretty much that would work best if you have them. Yeah, there's nothing yeah. about here about having dark vision. All right, so she'll get dark vision. Right. You have to like spend an hour to when the next time your characters take a short rest to uh, get attuned to them. Yeah, so you can actually use it, but you have goggles at night now. So can I, uh, can I walk my Pegasi over to the corpse and see if it'll eat it? I mean. He would. Okay, then. And he like, sniffs at it and like kind of and like looks at you kind of like guiltily, like, uh, you sure? I just uh, kind of pat its neck, it's reassuring a... it. Okay. It's he easy. starts to dig in. The goblins that were watching this are like, <laughs> And then their lasher like gets his whip out, like, get back to work, you bastards! This oh, isn't a free show. Hartman exclaims, like, holy shit. <laughs> and you're, you're watching... What kind of force is that? Uh, so he, like, pawing to try to get his clothes apart and get at the meat. All right. Is so poor, beautiful creature. Put a bulb, Straight I, so far. Put a bulb, I got a crossbow on her in the, in the, in any moment. Just, just, just give me the words. Just mm, imagine. She's this okay. Is, this is sketchy as fuck. <laughs> she's I, okay. Do I hear this? No. <laughs> I whispered in his ear. Yeah, because you're on the Pegasus, or next to the Pegasus while it's eating. Um, yeah, if y'all are a little bit away, because they're like, Okay, we're gonna go over here for a minute. <laughs> like, it's cool, man, it's cool. Okay, well, um, so, um, yeah. anything else you want to talk with the goblins? You're gonna keep going on your little path? I can't think of anything else I need to talk with them right now. Uh, oh, just real quick. Um, if you ever have any deals, like, any encounters with the Ice Dragon, simply do not harm it, let it be. Do not try to attack it, and you'll be okay. Oh, um, no, okay. Hopefully it won't be noticing us, but... We have made a deal with it, so we wish not to have uh -oh. it encumbered with any feeble attempts. But, <laughs> so next on, All right. down with the goblins, let's go down to the mountain's toe. So you keep going, following your little map of landmarks to get to the mountain's toe. A couple hours later, you come across, uh, in a little patch of field between two hills, uh, three dead halflings with the same kind of rat fur coats. Oh man, is she going to have to eat more of them? They look like uh, they were probably stabbed to death with something, like spears maybe, or sword tips. And uh, one of them has like burn marks, like, like on the coat. Can like I check to side. see how recently they 
died. Same kind of time level almost, about a couple days, in the last day or so. If you want a specific number, I guess, that would be like a medicine roll, so intelligence. What's your intelligence? Fucking hell, you have so many 16. feats. 16. 19. All right. Plus. Sometime within the last 24 hours. Okay. So it was really recent. So well, not I, in the last the bodies are cold, so it's not just an hour ago, but it's not more than a day either. I relay this to Furbolg. The Furbolg. Okay. Read. Right. Um well, we should probably examine the bodies to make sure that like try to figure out exactly what kind of set spears like looks like spear wounds. Yeah. Hmm. Well, he examines the body further. I'm going to take to the air and see if I see anything in the surrounding area. Alright, use per um, okay. perception check on that. Then, oh, I got a natural 20. 14 plus 18? What? 14 plus 4. That's oh. my perception. No, I thought I said 14 plus 18. I'm like, what? No, 14 plus 4, so it's 18 in total. Yep. She's the wisest of all. No, I'm a little bit wiser. On a treetop nearby, what you see a little winged kobold watching you as you take off and you fly around. And he spots you and he, as you like, kind of make eye contact with him and he like flutters off and tries to zip away. Can I cast Mage Hand and try and grab it? Uh, let me see the text of the spell card. Let's see. Because he's not an object, he's a person with will. No, I could take a shot at it. Don't. Okay. You don't see it. I'm flying in I the don't. air. I see. Remember, they're cold. The hand can't attack, activate oh, magic oh, items, or carry more than 10 pounds. No. No. Yeah. All right. Um, you could ray of frost them, or you could just try to fly up on them in pursuit and talk to them. He's a kobold. They are a draconic species. And you, you are there one draconic person. I will fly up to it and try to... Catch it. All right. Uh, let's give me an animal handling roll to see how well you do at, at getting your Pegasus to pursue. Animal handling. And what is the Pegasus's speed? Four. It's crazy, dude. That, that Pegasus, like, because the winged kobold has a flight. He can speed go. Speed is sixty feet. Okay, so you're twice. Is as, ninety feet. Oh, you're like three times as fast as the kobold. So physically, you should be able to catch up. This is just can you get the horse to bank right before the kobold can? <laughs> <laughs> the kobold's just like looking at the 18. Name. 18. Okay, that's good enough for me. All right, you're able to like get up. You can either like you can have the horse try to knock him out of the air, or you're just pacing with him and to interact with him. What do you want to do? Uh, you do catch up. Kind of knock him out of the air. Okay. Um, with the hoof of the. Think we'd be able to see her like flying and like knocking something down. Oh yeah, you can see all this. All right, so we're like the just kind of watching, charioting after it. Do we notice the kobold? Uh, they've only both made, like, one move action, so, like, they're both even probably within weapons range of y'all. They're, like, 30 feet up in the air. Oh, jeez. Alright. Um, I'm gonna scream, like, wait, don't hurt him, wait. Uh, Kobold, stop. That's a good voice. I like that voice. Wait, don't No, the Kobold doesn't know you from fucking Jack. And he, you don't speak Draconic, so. But you would hear him say, hey, don't hurt him. I kind of just. Lasso him. You are. Tisk. Right? You are neutral evil. Yes. Wait, does she have uh, any hemp and rope or anything like that? Yes, I do. I have... Then use your hemp and rope to lasso the 50 kobold. inches of silk rope, so I'm oh, kind silk of rope. going to tie him up. Did you say 50 inches? Feet. Feet. Okay. <laughs> so, okay, the, the Pegasus has I made a move. This. You can't really make a move because you're on the Pegasus, but you have yes. like a bonus action and an action you can use. I guess you can use your bonus action to whip your rope out and, and make a quick little loop. And then, uh, it's not really an attack if you're going to be lassoing him. I'm going to need a DC... I rolled a fucking nat 20. It's going to be hard to lasso the little guy. Uh, you need to beat a 20 with an animal handling roll. Animal handling? Yeah. Oh. No. It's a 9. You fail. Right. And he zips away. Okay. Uh, that would put you in an in initiative order. Alright, um, silk just is too light. Wait, wouldn't it have been a disadvantage because I kind of knocked him? No, you ended up trying to lasso him instead of knocking him because he yelled yeah. at you. Um, hurt him. Well, and we didn't make an attack roll for that. 
Yeah, I want to scream Kobolds of Io. Wait, Kobolds, wait. Can't really do anything else. Okay. Just keep going after him. Let's try to wave him down. Yeah. If nothing else, will take us to the rest of the kobolds. It's not his turn yet, so he can't, like, make a move reaction to do anything yet. Hartman, are you going to do anything? Mm, what could I do? You could shoot him with a crossbow. Mm. But I look, I look at the fireball and I'm like, want me to take a shot? I will smack you. Okay, well, never mind. Okay. I, hold, I, hold my, uh, I hold my action. And Ruby and the orcs are still in the wagon. Okay, it goes back around. Uh, kobold has an initiative of 20, so he goes first. He did hear the... Furbolg yelling at him, but he also just had someone try to lasso him, so, hmm. He swings back around and dive bombs towards the cart, and pulls something off his little belt and drops it at it. Hits the top of the cart, and everyone inside the cart takes four points of damage. No! Who's in the cart? Everyone. All the orcs and Ruby. Oh, fuck. Puyat's dead. Puyat's dead? No, let's split that four points between all of them. So that's right. four people. Each takes one point of damage. Damn. You're just throwing a little bomb. And now Puyat's there's a big hole in the top of your brand new canopy. At this point, I'm sitting there thinking, you stupid furball. Okay, um... Well, while you're thinking that, it's now your turn. The kobold just bombed the cart. How close do you think it is to the top of the cart? Not too little bastard. Let's see... Let's see here. I need to write a few things down anyway. What's Someone keep two has got Puyet's fucking character sheet right. so you can back down that she's lost a hit point. And I'm Ruby is cast down by one. Ray of Frost. It'll reduce his speed by 10 and he takes 1d8 cold damage. Okay. What's the range on that? 60 feet. Okay, yeah, I let you, you're still probably within range to hit him with that, even if you don't close the distance. Uh, actually, minus one more because minus one. Puyet is minus one. Okay. Roll for attack? Yeah, and you gotta beat an AC of 13. Three. Nope. Okay. Kind of blast around the cold. Furbolg, it's closer to you now. Alright, I want to use Thorn Whip to try to grab it out of the air and just kind of bring it to the ground. Okay. Beat an AC of 13. Eight plus nothing. Oh wait. Um, yeah, your spell attack. Spell attack. I believe it's plus six actually. If it's six, then you can do it. If it's five, you'll just barely miss. Uh, yeah. Spell attack plus six. All right, cool. You can you can you can manage to whip them by the foot, and you can drag them down closer to you, not all the way to the ground because he's still a bit up. But you can get them closer for oh. a second, and you can use a free action to say something. Um, it's like, uh, I grab him, pull him down, I'm like, dude, stop, we're here with the Knights of Io, we just wanted to let you know about the dragon. Okay. Hartman? Seeing all this, are you just gonna stand by, or are you gonna, like, make a foolish attack? Can I try and help? Uh, or do you run to the wagon and check on everybody? Mm -hmm. you, your wife just did get take a point of damage, and she's only got three hit points, you could whip that healing potion and waste it. <laughs> Like, how do you react? I'm a little angry at the moment. I want to shoot the little bastard. <laughs> Try to shoot him through the wing. I, I want. I want to. I want to take a, like a good shot at him. You know what I mean? So, so your partner's gonna try and make peace with it, and you're you're yep. just gonna. This shoot This isn't it. the first time that happened. He killed <laughs> a <laughs> <laughs> and he had lassoed. Let's do it. All right. Uh, I get out my crossbow and I shoot at it. AC thirteen. All right. Plus, uh, let's see. Plus my deck, so three and proficiency bonus. Eight. Three. And I wanna do I wanna re-roll with a superiority die. Okay. Precision attack. Eight. Alright, well you can I hit it. it. Okay. Now let's uh, get this bitch um and you damage. It's a D six plus three. D6. Nine. You've killed the kobold. Yeah. You shoot it straight to the fucking heart and it falls to the ground. Yeah, bitch. <laughs> He's got two more of those little bombs that do one die four damage to everything within a five foot ooh, radius on ooh, his yeah. belt. All right, Micah can pick those up. Mm. I go up behind him and slug him really hard in the back of the head. Okay. Let's see how much hit points. Yes. Do do? Can I uh, <laughs> harvest it? One die eight. 
in a moment. If you don't want to like look at any, and also like I don't know. Let's see. Uh, That's a die twenty. I know. I have to do the check. Also, the horse just had a meal, so it's not like hungry. Yet. I, I didn't. You miss me? Yeah, but for later meals. I miss you, but I'm like, hey, we're trying to get okay with the little nice bastard. Bio. Got my got my wife. We're trying to get okay with the I nice hold him up and I'm like, who the fuck do you think you are? <laughs> but the like, like, dude, you're about to freaking start a war because you wanted to kill one little freaking kobold. Well, that's, that's my problem. I'm, I'm an angry drunk. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, well Hartman's just angry drunk. Smoking my pipe. Okay, and, and, I, I, uh, and I want to go ahead and, like, hump three bombs? Three bombs. And they do one die four damage. To everything in a five foot radius where they strike. What's the range of throwing them? Say that uh, one more time. Say twenty, one like time. like an average thrown item. One, one d four. One die four damage. They're just real, just still just basic bitch bombs. That's nice. You're just like what the. Fuck I'm just hovering that? over you, like. I got them. I got them. I got that little bastard. I'm good at this. What was I sent into? All right, I use a perception check to check his body. Okay. He's a little winger. Sixteen. Uh. Do you have a perception modifier? He's got one silver coin in his pocket. It would be wisdom. No, uh, plus perception modifier of plus four. I got the so little guy by his leg. and I look that, That's what you find. You find there's a silver coin in his pocket and the bombs. That was all he was carrying. Right, I take the silver coin. He I does know. have like a you better look at what he's wearing. It is uh, like the similar kind of styles to what the, the IO knights are wearing. And he's got like a little IO emblem on his vest that he's wearing and shit. I hope so. Fun. What? I hold up the co the kobold and right, I look um, at you uh, on your Pegasus. You're flying above? I'm hovering right above you. Like, hey, your horse wants a snack? I mean, we do kind of get need to get rid of the evidence. Although he still still has the bombs, but we can hide those easier. Man, they're my bombs now. And there's, you still package. have the three uh, dead halflings and rat the coats. They're my bombs. Uh, I can around. drop them from above. Uh, want them? They already checked mm -hmm. the halflings. Yeah, I give um, them the bombs. No, you never did. You just uh, you you uh, did a medical check to see how long, but you didn't search their three. bodies for anything. Right. Uh, I want to search their bodies real quick. All right, we're gonna oh, randomly roll another sixteen. Uh, you don't need a, to roll for that you kind of search unless they're like they don't have anything hidden on them. Yeah, they you just, know they got like pockets. Yeah. We do need a random individual and treasure. Like, uh, and actually, the bombs would be more efficient with her due yeah. to she is an area aerial. So do I like toss the kobold at your horse and then like the horse snaps at it? Oh, no. Yeah. Okay. Uh, roll the. Who's doing the body searching? Yeah. Okay. Roll a die. A uh, percentage dice. Right. Need Two a, die ten. Here. Can I, yeah. Yeah. I need. Them. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Thirty-one. He's got four die six silver pieces. So roll four die six, and you find that many of silver coins amongst the uh, uh, bodies the of six the. From over there. And one of them has like a boot knife, but it's really small, so it'd be four, very good. Four, four, six, for one, so that's fourteen. That's fifteen. Okay, you got fifteen silver. All right, take fifteen silver. You need it. Cute. And my purple doesn't really care about that kind of stuff. He's a fucking communist. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think I'm trying to create this city for? Social I'm justice. To communism to the um, Faerun area. For your <laughs> and, uh, and you said ten gold pieces. Ten silver. 15 silver. 15 silver. Well, yeah. what I have. Oh, you start off with 10, yeah. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Okay. Oh, and like I said, one of them has a boot knife, which for a halfling is regular size, but for y'all's, it's barely like a little pocket knife, so I don't know if I oh. feel it worth taking it or not. It's average. I already have wood carver's tools and all that stuff, so I don't need a little knife. You need, need a pocket knife. knife? Anyone want a pocket knife? I got a little pocket knife. Throw a knife. Do you bury the bodies or just sure. leave them out in the open? Well, we have to bury the bodies too, too. If they don't, they'll become ghosts. Eat the so, awesome awesome. kobolds. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so uh, I quickly get my shovel out of the back again. Dig just one single hole for all of them. Okay. Just kind of flop them in there. Yeah. Mass grave for the were red halflings. Um, okay, well, the horses, by the time you land, the Pegasus is not hungry. It's only going to like need to feed every couple of days. Oh. Um, okay. On we small birds that don't typically small eat daily anyway. Jokes, though, so we bury the uh, kobold <laughs> with the rats. And okay. It's not even... Alright. You still never send a message to the cult of Io either. Which Kobolds, I can't. Uh, Actually, they no. have hides, right? Mm -hmm. No? Kobolds have hides, right? Yeah. 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 They got scaly hides. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they're little tiny uh, dragon people. Can I skin it? Uh, not at this time, please. 
No, that's this. And yeah, you're, I'm, like, I'm you're trying, already getting later and later into the day. It's going to be like okay. the, right okay. dark by the time you reach the toe. All right. that, that's a couple hours of fucking work. Actually, make it a sending stone. I out. guess you could bundle it up and, and just stick it in the cart, and hopefully you get somewhere where you have the time to do that before it starts smelling really bad. Just pull it nah, up. I'll just leave it. I okay. mean, Micah was really prone on carrying a pterodon head for a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it did come in handy, though. It did. Uh, <laughs> I want to use my sending stone to the Knights of Io to send out a quick message. Okay. Um, let's see. Pretty right. much... Uh, Deal has been made with Dragon. Dragon, not Glasshale. We'll talk more next week. That's it. All right. Um, I'm gonna leave out the cobalt because that's not needed. A few minutes later, you get a message back. Acknowledged. Uh, looking forward to your visit. You still have not encountered my cobalt team? Question mark. You won't be able to answer to tomorrow anyway. But he'll be expecting you to have something to say under the... Alright, I'm well aware. Alright. So, I believe we're done here, correct? Yeah. Let's right. mosey on down to the mountain's toe. Alright. Any experience for nailing that fucker? Oh yeah, head? you do get uh, to split 50 experience points between the three of you and Puyet, since she's a sidekick. Yay! So it's... It's only like it's 12 and a half each, so let's round it. Everyone gets 13 XP. Hells yeah. So Thank you, it. Hartman, for being so badass. Mm -hmm. I hear no one say. Because you killed the knight. Uh, <laughs> a cobalt of Io. Was it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, that's right. what I was saying. Before this even started, like, the whole crux of this matter is the danger of the, the fact that the, you have the knights of Io sitting on the porch of this dragon with this big secret hoard of gold, and that's the bad combination. And you need to be keeping the Knights of Io from wanting to investigate this area. You want them to stay chill and looking in other directions. Not Why did our... Scout disappear. Yeah. All right. Well, it's going to be pretty much like right at sunset as you reach the western entrance of the mine. The little map shows that there is a west entrance, and on slightly kind of around the corner of the tip of the mountain's foot, there's a there's a secret side entrance too that's marked on the map. Is Puya and everyone else healed now? Uh, Since did y'all did y'all stay long enough to take a short rest? Um, or move on. Well, I did have to um, dig a hole. Yeah, let's say that Puya could have taken a sword stretch and she can roll a hit die, but she won't have a hit die until Hardly she gets a long rest moves. again. So, yeah, she gets her hit points back, she's fully healed. Alright, cool. The orcs are down because they don't have hit dice to heal like that. They'll just have to wait till they have a long rest. And I guess Ruby would also be healed up. Okay. Alright. And so and we got to the mountain's toe? Well, it's right at dusk as you're going to be getting there. How do you want to approach it? Like I said, there's a western entrance, and then the other on the map there indicates that a little past it, if you follow the, the rock wall around, there's a little graveyard, and then there's a hidden entrance behind some bushes. Can we uh, say that during that short rest, I attune to the... Yes. Okay. Um, so there's a side entrance. Basically ignoring the internals. Because you wouldn't know the interior of the map, but like I said, there's a west entrance, that's the main entrance, and then following all the way around, past the little graveyard, there's the eastern entrance. Alright. And that's like a cliff face entrance, right? That's a cave, yeah. Right. Which is not indicated on the map, but you might see it. Alright, um, I say we wander around and go through the graveyard area. Okay, so you're gonna sneak around. I need some stealth rolls. Okay, cause actually, better yet, there um, are. Don't use stealth rolls. I got one better. I use pass without trace, so the entire party goes invisible for one hour. Hey. Okay. Well, you can get up real, as you, you can get pretty close to the entrance. Then you will see that there are two kobolds wearing military gear at the mouth of the mine, both standing on both sides, standing guard yeah, the entrance yeah. of the mine with their pokey sticks. Alright, um... And they're talking to each other, man. In Draconic, so only she would understand. You pick up that one's name is Nick, and the other one's name is Knack. Nick, Knack, Paddywhack. Okay. So... Um... Y'all killed Kurdu. I, uh... I killed Kurdu. With a good reason. Y'all let him do it. So it's a group. You're all responsible. <laughs> You're all going <laughs> down for murder. 
Okay, so well, I will ask them where they... Well, you're invisible. Do you want to yeah. break your invisibility oh, by talking? Right. So I was just saying, you're able to trace. see that they're there. Yeah, you have time. You can wander on. around and look around. Yeah. Um, if you try to go between them into the mine, you will have to make stealth rolls because you are might they, push into them. Are they knights? Yeah, uh, they're they're dragon shields. They're, they're not full-blown knights. Most but of the knights of I.O. Of... are dragonborn or humans. But, uh... But they're part of the... Yeah. Nice value. Because, like I said, they're trying to unify oh, all the various a, dragon races. Pretty much what it does is has a plus 10 know. bonus to stealth checks and can't be tracked except by magical means. So, yeah, like, so we would still roll We can stealth. still sneak in really yeah. easy. Um, kobold dragon shields. Ooh. They're um, a bit more buff than just your random average kobold. They are trained soldiers, but they're not full knights. They're not wearing like, armor or anything. I say we sneak in. We do have the plus 10 to stealth checks. Did y'all leave the horses and wagon a ways away? Um, let's say we found the closest uh, tree, and like that was close somewhere. Okay. Just tied it off. Are you going to leave the Pegasus with them to like stand guard over the horses? I have wing kind of circling above. Oh, you want her to kind of be like aer yeah. aer okay. aerial? Yeah, aerial. Alright. So the three of you and Puyet, or are you going to leave Puyet with the wagon and stuff? And what are you doing with your orcs? You want to bring the and, and Ruby, like who all are you dragging into this? I w want to say keep Puya the and um, Ruby and the orcs in uh, the Smaller wagon area group would be there. Yeah. Lubor, Mash. Oh, actually, which one speaks English? Or Lubash speaks is the one that speaks Kamash. Lubash, tell more to, to, to take care of Puya. You're coming with me. Okay. Mm. All right. All right so, so you got one orc. orc. And let's see, those three are going to stay. And there, so you're going to have, and Ruby's going to stay with the wagon too. Yes. Okay. And so I'm going to. We're all going to sneak through, so we have to roll. Well, who's going first? Who's going to make the first attempt to sneak past these two oh, dragon okay. shields? Remember, we get a plus ten to dexterity. I'm going to stick kind of in the middle. Twenty natural. Eighteen. Now it's just plus me. nineteen. One. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Plus three to dex. Come on, baby. <laughs> ah.